Welcome back, dear grade 11 students. You are still here listening to another lesson from Earth and Life Sciences. Our lesson for today is Ignis Rocks. How are they formed? Lesson 9. You will have to state that igneous rocks are divided into two types, namely intrusive igneous and extrusive igneous rocks. Specifically, this module will help you to compare and contrast the formation of different types of igneous rocks. Distinguish intrusive from extrusive igneous rocks. Differentiate igneous rocks based on silica content and differentiate the different textures of igneous rocks. Try to go back in time when your previous teacher in science called you in a recitation and asked the difference between igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. Did you find it difficult to distinguish one type of rock from the other? Do you still remember how scientists identify and classify the many rocks that we have around? Yeah, rocks are found everywhere. In this lesson, we will study how igneous rocks are formed and what are its major classifications. Igneous rock, from the Latin name ignis, meaning fire or magmatic rock, is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. These rocks are commonly found in the surface and beneath the earth, specifically in divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, subduction zones, and hot spots. Not all igneous rocks have the same physical and chemical characteristics. They differ in the origin, process of formation, color, density, size of grains, crystals, and many more. Igneous rocks are formed through the process of solidification and crystallization of molten rocks, magma, and lava. When hot molten rocks reach the surface of the earth, they undergo changes in temperature and pressure, causing them to cool, solidify, and crystallize. Moreover, there are also solidification and crystallization of magma beneath the earth. In terms of formation, igneous rocks can be classified into two, intrusive and extrusive rocks. The two main categories of igneous rocks are extrusive and intrusive. Extrusive rocks are formed on the surface of the earth from lava, which is magma that has emerged from underground. Intrusive rocks are formed from magma that cools and solidifies within the crust of the planet. When lava comes out of a volcano, and solidifies into extrusive igneous rock, also called volcanic, the rock cools very quickly. Crystals inside solid volcanic rocks are small because they do not have much time to form until the rock cools all the way, which stops the crystal growth. Intrusive rocks, also called plutonic rocks, cool slowly without ever reaching the surface. They have large crystals that are usually visible without a microscope. Here is the summary of the differences between intrusive and extrusive rocks. For the point of comparison, the other name for intrusive rocks is plutonic rocks and for that, um, in extrusive rocks, it is also known as volcanic rocks. Intrusive rocks can be found beneath the earth, while extrusive surface of the earth. In terms of origin, intrusive rocks are solidified magma, while solidified lava is the extrusive rock. For the color, usually dark are intrusive rocks, while extrusive rocks are usually light colored. For density, 
usually dense or extrusive rocks, while extrusive rocks are usually less dense or lighter than the intrusive rocks. For the composition, intrusive are mafic or made up of magnesium and iron, while extrusive are made up of felsic, feldspar, or a sort of aluminum. For the size of grains, intrusive rocks are large and with coarse grain, while extrusive, fine and small grain. For the size of crystals, large crystals are for those intrusive rocks, while small or no crystals are for the extrusive rocks. These are some examples of intrusive igneous rocks. Diorite, granite, pegmatite, and gabbro. These are examples of extrusive igneous rocks. Basalt, andesite, rhyolite, and scoria. Extrusive igneous rocks are used to construct buildings and statues, while intrusive rocks are used to make gravestones, stove, and countertops. Igneous rocks can also be classified according to their composition. They are composed of silica. Not all igneous rocks have the same silica content. If there is oversaturation of silica in the magma, its minerals will precipitate. On the other hand, if there is undersaturation of silica in the magma, its minerals will not precipitate and will not be present in the igneous rocks. The viscosity of magma is also affected because of silica content. There are four classifications of igneous rocks based on silica content, ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, and felsic. Let's start with ultramafic. Ultramafic igneous rocks have a very low silica content of less than 45% of silica. Before forming into igneous rocks, its magma has very low viscosity. Its color is ranged to black, like peridotite, to olive green, like the dunite. Their density is very high, and they are rich in pyroxene and olivine minerals. Examples of these rocks are peridotite and dunite. Next is mafic. Mafic igneous rocks have a low silica content of about 45 to 52% of silica. Before forming into igneous rocks, its magma has low viscosity, more viscous than ultramafic magma. They have black color, their density is high. They are composed of pyroxene, which is calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar. Examples of these rocks are gabbro and basalt. The third in line is intermediate. Intermediate igneous rocks have a high silica content of about 53 to 65% of silica. Before forming into igneous rocks, its magma has intermediate viscosity, but more viscous than the mafic magma. Their color is gray. Their density is intermediate. They are composed of biotite, alkali feldspar, and quartz. Examples of these rocks are diorite and andesite. Last type, according to silica content, is the felsic. Felsic igneous rocks have a very high silica content, more than 65% of silica. Before forming into igneous rocks, its magma has high viscosity, more viscous than the intermediate magma. 
they have light color, then their density is very low, they are composed of quartz and alkali feldspar. Examples of these rocks are granite and rhyolite. This shows the difference of these types of igneous rock, the ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, and felsic, in terms of color, silica content, and magnesium oxide content, and the major mineral content. Please take note of this. Igneous rocks have different textures. Texture of a rock is the size and arrangement of the minerals it contains. These are the classifications of igneous rocks according to texture. First is the glassy texture. It is composed of unordered atoms and resembles dark manufactured glass. Obsidian is a natural glass that usually forms when highly silica-rich magma solidify. Next is the porphyritic texture, composed of two distinctly different crystal sizes. Third, paneritic or the coarse-grained texture. It is composed of mineral grains that are large enough to be identified without a microscope. The fourth texture type of igneous rock is the vesicular texture, extrusive rock containing voids left by gas bubbles that escape as lava solidifies. Pumice is a frothy volcanic glass that displays a vesicular texture. Pyroclastic or fragmental texture is the fifth type. It produced by the consolidation of fragments that may include ash, one molten blobs, or large angular blocks that were ejected during an explosive volcanic eruption. Aphanitic or the fine-grained texture Composed of crystals that are too small for the individual minerals to be identified without a microscope. Yay! That ends our lesson today. Good job! Thank you for listening and congratulations. Keep safe by staying at home. See you next time. Bye-bye!